Hi and welcome to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. I hope you're having a beautiful day today, no matter what it is you're doing. For the free wire tutorial today on YouTube, I'd like to share a technique used for setting cabochons. Now it can be used on pretty much any size and shape of cab, but it is especially good for extra large cabs like this huge rose quartz. Now I've been making this design for about eight years now and it uses a slightly heavier gauge of wire than you might be used to. However, the technique is suitable for absolute beginners. Now this is really part one of a two-part tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to set cabs using the dragon tooth prong setting and then next time around I'll show you how to turn it into this statement collar. With just a few quick moves you can make something that's really quite dramatic. I'll show you this a little bit more closely on the board now and then we'll crack on with today's tutorial. So for today's tutorial we're going to learn how to set an oversized cabochon. It could be pear shape, it could be oval, it could be round, it could be fancy cut, whichever piece of gemstone or bead you have to work with this can be adapted to suit. As ever we're going to start by making a frame that form fits our cabochon or whatever you're going to use but this is the segment we'll be covering today in our tutorial. So let's just pop that up there. Next week we'll learn how to do the fancy rippled part for that statement collar. I'm going to begin by using a slightly heavier than usual wire and I have 12 inches here of 1.25 millimeter gauge wire which is approximately 16 gauge. Now this is around about a 12 inch length and we're going to start by giving that a bit of a warm through. The reason I'm using a slightly heavier wire than I normally would for a cabochon frame is that I want to put quite a lot of pressure on it when I'm adding those dragon teeth prongs. So let's Let's get that nice and warm, especially right down at the base there. Now you've seen me do this dozens of times over the last four or so years. What I'm going to do is just start around about centrally on that foot long length of wire and just create a frame ever so slightly larger than my chosen cabochon. Now I'm using 12 inches of wire today to create a pendant for this design. When we move on to next week to make the statement collar, if you're planning on doing all of this, it will be a longer length of wire. So when you refer back to this, if you need to, you'll need more wire to create that complete statement collar. Today we're just using 12 inches. I've got a reasonably long cabochon that I'm working with today. I received this just the other day and it's a really gorgeous piece of moss agate. Love moss agate, really interesting. So with this type of design we want the form around that cabochon to be the same shape but just ever so slightly larger. We need to have that little bit of airspace around the edges, as I often do with my designs, especially with a prong setting. So I'm just going to get that to be reasonably accurate. You may need to open it up at the base a little bit, or you can use a round form if you have one, just to get that shape going, whatever is easiest for you. I'm not going to spend hours and hours getting it absolutely perfect. You do have the option to make that happen. So I'm reasonably happy with the shape I have so far. It might need to be just slightly larger. What I'm going to do is pop up to that 12 o'clock position. I'm going just slightly to the right of centre to create my first upright bend. And then if I flip that over, I'll do exactly the same on the other side. Now they don't have to meet exactly in the middle with a bit of a gap up there, especially if you're going to be creating the statement collar later on. It doesn't matter if there's a bit of a gap, we will be drawing that together with wire later on. Just making sure that they're both nice and straight up at the top. I'm just going to splay them apart because it helps me later on if I want to do some weaving up the centre there. I will just take a few moments just to make sure that I'm happy with that form but I'm not going to do that on camera so join me in just a second and we'll get that set perfectly within the frame. So I've taken just about a minute or so to refine the shape of my frame to ensure that it chases all the way around the edge of my chosen cabochon just to make sure that that's nice and neat and tidy and there is indeed a small gap available to me. We're going to work on the actual dragon tooth prong setting section of today's tutorial now so join me back down at the board. So I have my frame set and ready to go. I've got my cabochon in hand and I have now the next piece of wire that we're going to use. So if I'm creating a rather large pendant as I am today, this has got to be about 40 or so millimetres in length, 
almost two inches from top to bottom almost but not quite so it's quite a large cabochon admittedly not as big as this very old chunky rose quartz so i'm going to work with approximately 24 inches of 0.8 millimeter or 20 gauge wire so i need to find the approximate center of my wire because i do like to start down at the base so i've just opened this out and i'm going to work right down here in the center of that wire so if i put a really sharp angle in to begin with and just give that a little bit of a harden up and I'm only covering a very small amount probably less than a quarter of an inch with the pliers just to give that a little bit of hardness to get us going now you can make this slightly finer you can close those up a little bit or you can leave them slightly more like V shapes but don't worry about marking the wire. I'm working with raw copper, which is quite a soft wire, so it's very easy to mark it, but I like that on my projects. You have the option to be a little bit more careful or to use nylon covered plier tips, whichever works for you. You can even hammer the frame if you're working with a slightly lighter wire or you want it to be really sturdy. The reason for having the hard frame will become apparent very, very soon. So I'm going to put this section which is the first of our dragon tooth prongs right down at the bottom of my frame today. Now the rose quartz is a very deep cabochon. If I just flip that up sideways, you can see that's a very chunky piece of gemstone. So you will need to consider the length of your dragon tooth prong when you're looking at the depth of your cabochon. This is a slightly narrower but still reasonably chunky cab. So I'm going to allow at least a quarter of an inch on that prong probably slightly more actually, just a little bit over the top. So I'm going to sit my first dragon tooth prong down at the six o'clock position on my frame. And what I'm looking to do now is to bend the wire on both sides back at 90 degrees. Now it's actually easier to do this off the cabochon. I'm also going to sort out these two coils because they're working in opposite directions to how I want them to work. So I'm just going to on the one side, just bring that around. It's nice and soft because I pre-warmed it before I brought it to air. And I'm just going to curl that around on the one side. And then on the other side, exactly the same, first warming that through once, and then just tidying that round into a small coil. It will be helpful and hopefully won't hit quite as many sound making objects on my desk. Now for this tutorial, I love to use my very, very old, I've had these about 13 years, they're almost like a, a chunky bullet tip plier. They're the same width all the way along each side. And I'm going to grip that little dragon tooth prong and just push right angles back like so. And I'll show you what that looks like when I remove the pliers. So I've got a sticky uppy dragon's tooth and then 90 degree bends coming backwards. If I bring the two pieces together and just allow that to sit onto the frame, I'm going to bring the tails of both of those wires round. Now what will happen in all likelihood is that the wire will want to retain the bend that you've created and will then start wrapping with a part of the dragon's tooth. What we're looking to do is to keep all of that dragon's tooth on the front of that frame. So I'm going to pinch that really, really hard down onto the frame with my non-dominant thumb. And what I'm going to do is bring the tail all the way around. I've got that in the entry point up here at 12 o'clock is open, so I'm going to wrap around that frame twice and bring the residue of that wire to the back of the design. I need to do the same on the other side now. The key here is to hold on to this dragon's tooth really, really firmly so that none of the wire from the front of the tooth becomes part of the wrap. So if I pinch that really, really firmly and then draw the residue of the wire from this side all the way around once and then push it up at the back. Now you'll see it's gone slightly south of where I wanted it to be. So I'm just going to tighten the coil up on the one side and then recite it so it sits down at that six o'clock position. And what you'll see, because we worked really hard on pinching that dragon's tooth, is that it has retained its size and shape. Now, once that is in position, you'll see if I show you that sideways, it's quite flat. I'm just going to very gently elevate that dragon's tooth. I'm going to use my thumbs. But if that's difficult for you, you can just lift that up with your pliers like so. 
without undoing any of those lovely neat wraps you've just created. Now on the rear of your cabochon you can go for nice smooth arcs, you can recreate dragon's teeth on the rear side as well, depends whether you want to wear this back to front or whether it doesn't bother you. I'm going to go for nice smooth arcs but you do have the option to create more dragon's teeth on the back if you wish to. So on this side I'm just going to put a nice smooth little rainbow shape covering quite a reasonable quantity of the rear side of that cabochon. And what I'm going to do for today's tutorial, I'll just clear the board slightly, is I'm just going to work up one side and I'm not going to do both sides. But basically what you will do every time you perform an action on the right hand side you will perform the same action equal and opposite on the left hand side. So I'm going to create an arc over here on the right again pinching that little rainbow shape very very firmly drawing the wire through that nice access point up at the top and bringing the wire back to the front of the design. Once you've got those two visible wraps you can tighten up the coils neatly like so just give that a tiny bit of a squeeze and then what we're looking to do is to create our second dragon's tooth. Now dependent on how big and unwieldy your cabochon is that will define how many dragon's teeth you need. Now this old rose quartz is a huge slab of gemstone and therefore it needed very many and several dragon's teeth. This is a much lighter and ever so slightly narrower gemstone so I won't need quite as many dragon's teeth at all. If you have a very slender piece of gemstone or bead to work with you can get away with really quite few of them, perhaps five teeth on the front but I'm going to continue to demonstrate now. So in order for me to recreate the size here that I've used, I'm going to grab those trusty, elderly and really not very pretty pliers, but they are quite useful. Now I'm just going to push the wire gently up at the front, pop them into position and then bend the wire sharply back. You may need to grip hold with some finer pliers, I've just used that kind of as a measuring stick more than anything. Bring that back and then you can fine up that dragon's tooth shape with whichever flat facing pliers you desire. Let's give that a bit of a squish and a squeeze. So my dragon's teeth are all going to be the same size because I'm using that set of pliers to measure them. If you don't have a non-tapering set of pliers you can always use a little bit of marker pen on a tapered set and just always use that same size. Now when you're setting the next dragon's tooth along you don't have the same capacity to work the same way as you did on that first central lowest dragon's tooth. Let me just tighten that up it's bothering me that it's not super neat so give that a squish and a squeeze all nice and tight. So what we want to do is to put the bend in our wire let's pop those bent chain nose pliers over the surface of the frame and just grip that binding wire that we're using here to create those dragon's teeth. I'm going to grip that really firmly whilst I draw the wire around the frame and up the back of the design. Once I've got that shape in position, I'm going to assess whether or not that dragon's tooth is the same dimension as the first. It's a little bit soft, but I'm going to edit that in just a moment. What I will do is pinch very, very firmly, draw the tail of wire up and around, and then all the way across the back and then just tighten up that section that we just wrapped, making sure that's nice and neat and tidy. And then I can get to work on that dragon's tooth like so. I'm going to tighten that up ever so slightly like we did on the first one. And then just draw those two wraps slightly closer together. I'm going to repeat this on the other side, equal and opposite. And then I will add at least another one up at the top. However, what I will do before I continue on the far side is I will lift these teeth up slightly and I will apply a gentle curvature to them. If I show you this sideways you can see the wire on my lowest dragon's tooth is quite straight. Well that's not how the cabochon works, it's domed. So I'm going to grip the top of the tooth and I'm just going to gently bring that over in a nice very very gentle smooth curve. So you can see that's curved now and if I drop this back down to flat, grab my cabochon, Joey's having a bit of a shout, I'm going to slide that cab into position. So you can see why we need that little bit of airspace around the outside, because we're continually adding 
Can you see the layer of wire there on the inside of the frame between the cabochon? So you do definitely need to allow that space for things to occur. Now, once you've got your bottom three, so let's imagine I've done my base and then I've done a lower left and a lower right. If I flip this over onto the back, in order, let me just lift this other wire out of the way for a second, pretend it's not there. In order to keep things nice and safe and tight across the back, at this point I like to cross the tail of wire all the way across the back of the gemstone. This makes for a really lovely solid frame, it keeps everything nice and tight and it makes sure that things don't get away from you. So what I will do, we've done our base tooth and we've done one of the teeth down at the lower side. I'm going to switch sides now. So I'm going to bring the wire across the back of the cab, pinch everything firmly into position, draw the wire around, I'm just taking it around the opposite side of the frame, between the frame and the cab, bringing that all the way across. Let's just tighten that up with those bent chain nose pliers and if I bring that over the front of the cab turn everything over we're just going to ignore this for a moment because we'll be repeating that design you can see I've switched sides I will then be able to do the second side tooth dragon's tooth on the opposite side and I will simply repeat on this side which will lead to a crossover on the back before adding a tooth up here on this side. So it is exactly the same process over and over again until you've added all of the teeth as far up as you wish to go. So I'm going to complete that design now off camera because it will be very dull to repeat the same thing over and over again. And I'll join you in just a moment and show you how we have got to where we are. So I've taken just a few moments to finish off those dragon tooth prongs. I'll show you that on the board in just a second. And I'll also show you a little bit more closely on the back exactly how we got to here. So my moss agate is now safely ensnared with those dragon tooth prongs. And I've simply repeated on one side exactly the same as I have on the other. Each of the teeth has been made in the same way and it's got that little gentle curvature to ensure it sits flat to the gemstone on the surface. If I just flip that over onto the back, you'll see that I've decided to cross over up at the top again. So cross from one side to the other on that middle tooth and then we're going to cross again at the top just to tie everything together. I didn't want to do that bit without you in case you were unsure. So let's flip that back over. And all I'm going to do is to support that frame, and this is why it pays to have a good strong wire for your frame. I'm pressing up on that little crossy over bit just here, and I'm going to wrap twice quite close to the top here. And what should happen, hopefully, <laughs> is once we get those nice and tight, the whole thing will become super secure. Now, if you are at all worried about the cabochon coming out at the top, you have the option to add the last tooth just at this position. And you can do that by wrapping twice. In fact, let's do that so you can see what's going on. We're going to wrap around again the frame. That's one time. Push that down just to the side of the shoulder. And then again, and I'll bring this one over the front. Do take the time just to make sure that you're happy with how neat everything sits. I'm just going to tighten those wraps up all the time, being super gentle with my gemstone. So if I leave one of those wires up and out of the way, we can add a final prong up at the top. Now, I generally speaking quite like to have an odd number of prongs on the face of a gem. Not entirely sure why, but today we're going to mix and match so that we get one on the opposite side. You do also have the opportunity to just shift those slightly if it's come away from that six o'clock position. So I'm going to create a little wrap in exactly the same way, a little dragon's tooth rather. I'm just going to make sure that that wire is nice and straight. If I lift it away gently, give that a bit of a, a strengthen up with the flat sides of my pliers. I'm then going to try and create a dragon's tooth prong of the same kind of dimension. Let's just give that a bit of a sharpen up on the angle, like so. And then I will wrap that around twice on the shoulder just here. And that means that your cab has got literally nowhere to go. Now what this means is you have a slight asymmetry. So if you don't want to have an asymmetry, you can do away with the second wrap 
In fact, let's do that, shall we? Let's get rid of this second wrap. We don't really need it, so it's the one that my finger's hanging on to. So let's give that a trim just here. And then we will move this one off the end. Let's get that from underneath. In fact, you can just trim away wherever because we're not going to use it. And then hopefully that will move around and off and out of the way. What you'll need to do with that final bit of cut wire is just tuck that down inside the frame neatly and firmly. So that's good and strong. You've still got a pass of wire across the back at the top. Your cab is going nowhere on the rear side. Let's ensure it goes nowhere on the front of that cabochon as well. So again, you will need to put a little bit of curvature in your dragon's tooth. I'm going to push that down against the gemstone really firmly. And then I'm going to draw the wire. Now, in order to make it super symmetrical, I'm going to take the wire to the right so that it wraps in the same orientation. So if I push the end of that wire up inside the frame, outside the gemstone, and just gently feed that around, trying to control it so that we don't lose any of the shape and size and dimension of the dragon's tooth we've created. I'm going to just protect the gemstone and tighten that wire coil up, pushing them both together taking the tail across the back now if you really wanted to you can draw that down the center to just add security i don't think it looks particularly attractive so i'm going to trim the tail of the wire away so we've got from our was it 24 inches of wire that we used we've probably got about six or seven inches spare to reuse elsewhere and i'm just going to tighten that little coil up and tuck the tail as close into the back of the frame as possible just take a second to get that neat and tidy and squish across those coils. So from the front, you've got another dragon's tooth. Let me just straighten this up here. You can do any kind of weaving that you want up on the shoulders to create a lovely bale of your choice. Bearing in mind you're working today with a slightly heavier 1.25 millimeter or 16 gauge wire, you won't have the same level of fluidity as you often do. You might prefer to go for a Loki bale. Do have a look back a few weeks ago i did a loki bale for you so it's a really simplistic design you just do a little bit of weaving and then wrap the whole thing around a round form if you at any point need to lift the dragon tooth prongs you are able to do so very very gently so i've just pulled that ever so slightly forwards we can make sure that we've got that curvature in position and then you can push it back down utilizing your pliers just to secure the grip on the cabochon so that is the nuts and bolts of your dragon tooth prong setting tutorial you can obviously spend a lot more time than i have today getting those exactly how you want them to you can tighten them up slightly if you want slightly pointier teeth and you can recite them so if one isn't entirely opposite to the other you can just move them up and down ever so slightly and it's nice and secure why don't we give that the shake test while i clear the board of tools that cab is going nowhere. So to complete the pendant, you can go for whatever bale you desire. You've got a couple of inches on either side there to work with. You can do a simple weave, you can do a Loki bale, you can do whatever bale you fancy. And don't forget, you can play around with those dragon tooth prongs to your heart's content. Let's get that a little bit tighter just there. Overall, I'm really happy with that design. If you fancy learning how to make this elaborate neck piece or collar, I'm going to show you this next time around. And I have pre-set this frankly vast banded onyx, which we're going to turn into a statement collar next time around. The technique is the same, but you will need a significantly long section of that long heavy wire. You'd need 30 or so inches, but I will cover that in the next video. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today and learning how to do the dragon tooth prong set pendant. Next time around, we'll turn it into a feature statement collar. Have yourself the most beautiful day. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content and thank you so much. Take care now. Bye for now.